In this video, we'll be building a 10 foot oak table with uh, flush aprons and a nice reveal along the top edge of the tabletop there, as you can see. So let's get into it. I'm uh, obviously breaking down lumber now. The lumber we're using um, is already surfaced on three sides. We bought it that way. And uh, the company we buy it from, it's not a huge difference between uh, uh, the, the wood that suffers surface three sides and the, the rough. So uh, we can get started on our project a lot quicker with the uh, just using the surface on three sides. So these are the leg blanks. We're gonna we're gonna glue uh, three of these up into each leg, and uh, you know all these cuts we're doing right now are oversized. So after we get them out of clamps, um, we can then run them through the joiner and planer, and uh, get them all squared up and cleaned up, and everything the same size and square. If I remember right, these legs were uh, ended up being four by four, and I think these blanks were uh, were like four and a half wide. It just gave us just enough room to uh, to get them cleaned up. These little clamps are from Harbor Freight, and uh, the rest of their clamps that I've tried suck but these little six inch clamps are amazing for the price you, you just can't beat them i love the rubber handles on them uh, they're really nice to use to tighten tighten the tighten them down just great little clamps i actually have those red handle clamps i think those are bessies and uh i like my harbor freight ones a lot better So here I'm cutting down the aprons. That's obviously the long aprons. And there's gonna be uh, two aprons on, on each side. Uh, they're gonna be stacked and you can kind of see that come together as we go. But uh, it'll make more sense as you see it come together. There'll be the small little two inch apron in the front that's flush to the leg and it'll have a chamfer on the bottom of it and then a, uh, a wider apron behind that. I think, I believe it was three and a quarter. So here I'm figuring the, uh, the chamfer, I'm just drawing it on there and seeing what looks best to me. I switched the table saw blade over to a 45 and I line up that uh, that line that I drew on the board. So that's that's one of the short aprons that goes on the short side. And I'm actually gonna get a little test piece, a piece that we cut off of those. Uh, I've already done that. To, I got it out of the trash can and, and ran it through there just to make sure it, it looked the way I wanted it to. And then uh, now I'm running the, uh, the rest of the aprons through and cutting that chamfer on the bottom of them. Like I said before, these uh, these boards were surfaced on three sides, so three sides are flat and square to each other. Um, so right now I'm cutting that fourth side off. These boards are we're going to be gluing up to make the tabletop a little later on. Uh, I've already cut them down to to rough length. You know they're all an inch and a half long. So uh, you know this top is ten foot long, so they're ten foot and an inch and a half. And uh, they're all different widths. 
and they're actually different widths on each end so we've got to measure each end and uh, pick out the, the skinniest one Just set the table saw to that and get that fourth side squared up now here I'm just going to lay out the, the top pieces and make sure I've got enough to make my width of my table and uh, I actually don't we had to run to the store and get one more one more board to wrap that up get, next day we're getting the legs back out of the out of the uh, clamps And those little six inch clamps, we keep some on each end of the shop, which is kind of handy. Unless you're using them all like this, then it's a pain in the butt. But if you're over on that side of the shop, it's handy to have a set of clamps over there. Now I'm setting the uh, radial arm saw up to, uh, to cut our tenons on the ends of these aprons. And uh, unless, unless the leg is the same, width is the apron and we have to center our tenon we will just that real arm saw is set three quarters of an inch off the tabletop which is the the thickness of our tenons that we normally do so basically we just cut the front of those aprons off and make our tenon and it's flush to the back and that's that's worked great for us over the years We'll also cut the top and bottom cheeks, obviously. And that's what I'm getting set up to do here on the table saw. And I'll normally cut uh, the top of my tenons three quarters of an inch down and the bottom just an eighth of an inch, just enough to, to hide the mortise. Yeah, you'll see all this come together. This I had to do kind of some funky joinery here to get this to work. And uh, and that's why I'm taking all this time laying all this out because the, the joinery is a little funky, at least it was for me. So uh, I had to get everything laid out here and figure out what I needed to cut and where. So that back apron is actually a portion of it is going to come all the way out over the top of the leg and that's what that 45 is at the end that's going to be on the top of the leg and those 45s will meet and then it'll also have a, a tenon on the bottom that goes into the leg and it'll have a three three quarter inch gap between there and hopefully that makes a little more sense as we go along you'll see it so uh, i'm making those cuts now on the bandsaw to make that tenon and in the, in the uh, 45 portion that'll go on top of the leg. That little magnetic stop is great for stuff like this. When you uh, have a board that is gonna be cut off on that side and you don't want it to get caught between the fence and the blade it's nice to have just that little stop that you can put over there that won't trap something between it and the blade i use that thing on the bandsaw all the time So now I'm just trying to hog out that uh, that section in between the part that's going to go on top of the leg that's going to 45 and the tenon below. I'm just I'm just hogging out that three quarters of an inch in between those two. Now James here is uh, 
is cutting the tenon portion. And we're gonna have to clean that up a little more. And I think we end up doing that off camera, but he's getting the majority of it with the radial arm saw there. And then we'll finish it up with some chisels. And I'll zoom in here for in just a second. And you'll be able to see that a little better. There it is. You can kind of see what, what we're doing there. As I know it still wasn't very good, but hopefully you'll, you'll see it as it comes together, the process comes together. Now we're just uh, getting our top glued up. It's, it's, it's gonna end up being 43 inches wide and 10 foot long at the final measurement. With a big glue up like this, it's really nice to have, uh, have two, two sets of hands. We like to put those six inch clamps on the ends just to uh, keep the boards in line, lined up as we uh, get our pipe clamps in position. And then we'll have that dead blow hammer to uh, flatten out anything we need to flatten out as we tighten the clamps up. I'm just using some sawdust with that glue to fill a couple of voids here and there. My short aprons, you know, there's gonna be a small one in the front and the bigger one in the back that has all that funky joinery. And uh, they lined up really well. Um, I, was, I was lucky with those, they both worked out really well, but the, the long ones didn't quite line up. And I'm gonna have to do a little more cutting to get those to fit. And uh, it's real important that everything matches up correctly, not only that those two match up, but they also are the right length because that top does not hang over. You don't have any room to play. You know, that top is gonna to be the same size as the base. So your base has gotta be you know, the size it's supposed to be, if that makes sense. And getting those two aprons with the funky joiner and the back apron to uh, to match up and be the right size was uh, was a bit of a challenge. You can see while I'm working on them, James is uh, back there working on our top. He's uh, getting the glue cleaned off of it, and then he'll start sanding it. Now he's getting the belt sander out. Yeah, I tried to uh, clean this up with a little cordless router, and uh, that didn't work out at all. I, I tried to have the, the two aprons clamped together there and then use the one to guide the other uh, just to avoid using a chisel. But sometimes a chisel is just the only thing that's going to do the job. I gave up on uh, the router pretty quickly. I like using that big uh, four by 24 belt sander, it's a Makita, uh, to flatten our tops. It really makes quick work of it. You can see he's back there in the corner, he's sanding across the grain and uh, it's definitely more aggressive that way. And you can get your, your boards to match up a lot quicker, but uh, it also creates a lot of scratches. So after you get done with that, then you've got to straighten her out and uh, and sand with the grain to get rid of those scratches.
I finally got the apron joinery cleaned up, so now I'm laying out my mortises on my legs. I'm using that T-square to uh, pull those aprons out to the front of the legs. And then uh, once I get them in place, I'm tracing around my tenons onto the legs so I can see where my mortises need to go. Now we'll move over to the mortiser and uh, start getting it set up and cutting mortises. Our aprons are gonna be flush to the front of the leg. So, you know, on a typical table, we'll center the mortise. So uh, you just have one set up, you know, for all eight mortises for, you know, all four legs, two on each one. And uh, they're just right in the center. But uh, in a situation like this, whenever your apron is flush to the front of the leg, then uh, you've got to cut half your mortises on one side of the leg and half of them on the other side of the leg. So here I'm set up cutting them on the front side and uh, we'll do four of them there. Well, they'll actually be eight because there's two aprons in each, uh, each side. And that's what I'm doing here is cutting for that second apron. Now I'm moving back to the back and I'm cutting those other four apron or those other four mortises on the uh, on the other side of the legs. And the second set. just a little bit of waste between the two and I clean that up with a chisel and the air hose makes it a lot easier to uh, get all the crap out of that hole and then we'll test fit it here in a minute So there's the short apron in the front and uh, the wider apron behind it. Now here I'm gonna try and get the long ones in there too, just to make sure my 45s match up and uh, I got all my measurements right. I'm gonna have to get James's attention so he can hold, hold the other end of that up for me. I wish you could see it in the, you'll see it later, but uh, you get both those in there, get them pulled together and that 45 matched up great. They were a crazy tight fit, so I think I'm just gonna clean them up a little more. Here in a second, I'm gonna try and let you see the joinery again a little better right there. You can kind of see what we made. So, uh, that apron goes in, and the small apron goes in front of it. Those two get glued together, and they both get mortised into the legs. Then we get clamps in there, we'll use a square to make sure that uh, everything's squared up. And you'll see on the second set of legs, uh, one of them is a little crooked. The other one's straight and one of them's a little crooked. So uh, to fix that, I'll take the, the bar clamp and, uh, and angle it. I'll, I'll pull it up on that leg a little bit, just on that one side and leave it down low on the other one. And that'll pull that leg in uh, just, the, just enough to get it squared up.
I'm just drawing a line there so I can see where, where to spread glue and where not to. Don't need to put that leg in yet because uh, you have to put the other apron on. Big dummy. You know, one always seems to go to go together better than the other one. The first one went together like a champ. This one was a little bit more of a struggle. See, I'm checking it with the square there, and it's not quite square. Just playing around with my clamps until I get them square. You can see I'm pulling that one end out. The other end is still back where it was. You see that's an angle there, but she's all squared up. After I move them, I like to come over again with the square just to make sure nothing changed while I was carrying them. Now I'm trying to get that glue cleaned up in that reveal because... Uh, that's going to be, you know, a really hard spot to get into and sand later. So uh, I want to get as much of it cleaned up now as I can. I end up hand, hand sanding that space later. And obviously if I'd left all that glue squeeze out in there, that would have been a lot of fun. Now, I missed a video in getting the, the long aprons on there, but uh, it's just a, a repeat of what we did on the short side. Except for a lot longer clamps. <laughs> You see James back in the back corner there. We just, I just missed it. I don't hope, I don't know if you did or not, but uh, uh, he was using the router just to soften the edges. He just, just had a real small round over bit in there. Um, we like to do that before we do our final sanding. That way, uh, any either burn marks or uh, or lines from the router, you can clean up as you're doing your final sanding there, which is what he's doing now with the Merca. Meanwhile, I'm cleaning up my 45s that are sitting on top of those legs and I'm using the fine file to do that and that worked out really well for me. Now I'll have three braces that go, uh, go between those long aprons and that's what I'm cutting up now is the, the other boards for those three aprons. And when I measure for the width of those, I measure right up against the legs on both sides um, obviously you don't want to measure out in the middle because if your aprons are, are bowed at all, then uh, you're going to be measuring that bow. But if you measure right up against your legs, then you're going to get you know, a lot more accurate measurement. And if you have to push your aprons out or pull them together with, uh, with clamps to get into that size, you know, at least they'll be the right size. They'll be the same size the legs are, but if that makes sense. So here I'm just laying out where those three braces are gonna end up. Do the middle one first. I attach those braces with uh, pocket holes and glue. So uh, getting my pocket holes put on there now.
and some glue. When I'm measuring to put, uh, to figure out where those are gonna sit, I'll just measure down one side and put marks. And then I use a, a square uh, to square my leg up to the apron instead of putting marks on both sides. Now the top is all sanded and ready to go, so we're gonna carry that into the finish room. And I'm gonna keep working on the base. The only thing I have left to do are, is uh, put the four blocks in the corners and then a lot of sanding, cleaning up. These blocks I'll put in with five screws, one into the leg and then two on each side. And, uh, and obviously glue as well. I was really proud how those 45s came together on top of those legs. That was, uh, that was a little complicated and I was happy to see it come together. This is the first table I've built in this style, and if I continue building these, which uh, I think I would like to, I like the looks of it, I'm gonna need to make, uh, make some jigs so I don't have to figure all that out every time I do it. Now I just came back here and, and popped some screws down through those, uh, through those 45s on top of there and down into the legs just so they don't move later. They're glued together, but uh, it's better safe than sorry. Those extra screws aren't gonna hurt anything. Now I'm hand sanding in that reveal and it's really hard, it'd be really hard to get a power sander in there. So uh, I'm just have to go around this 10 foot table and, and sand that whole thing. Clean up some glue there with a chisel. I spent a lot of time sanding on this. It's, you know, this is obviously uh, sped up quite a bit. Now I'm gonna use a little router to uh, soften the edges on the legs and then uh, get it all sanded well. But I guess before I do that, these uh, two aprons are glued together but uh, I'm gonna put some screws in there too just to make myself feel a little better about it. Now I'm running that router along the, uh, along the corners of the legs to soften them with just a small round over bit and sand and sand and sand. Let my dog in and sand. All right, this table's just about built. I'm gonna go through here and uh, 
use the biscuit joiner to put some slots in there. Um, you know, we just use those metal tabletop clamps to attach the top to the base, and we use the biscuit joiner to put the slots for that. We also always like to put uh, put adjustable feet on the bottoms of all of our our tables. So you can see James is getting that screwed in there and then the, the foot will screw into that. And that table's done. I love the, uh, I love the chamfer along the bottom of that apron. I love the reveal. I think it's just think it's a really cool table. If you have any questions about this build, just leave a comment below. And uh, be great if you subscribed. We'll be posting a lot more, a lot more content soon. Thanks for watching.